G'day everybody, it's Dave from Wing Chun Mind Force. In today's video I'm going to start a series about the uh, cool and mysterious form called Bill G. Now, Bill G, like the other forms, has different translations in English. The main one that I've heard is darting fingers. Um, it's also said to mean striking out a force with a fingertip. And um, today I'm going to start off the series reading from Master Chu Shang Ten's book, The Book of Wing Chun, Volume 1. And um, this is from page 222. It's the, it's the introduction. And um, sorry, it's 220. Uh, it's the introduction to Bill G, Part 4. And um, in this translation, Bill G is translated as darting fingers. Um, so just for the sake of most of us who are used to the term Bill G, I'll, as I'm reading it, I won't keep saying darting fingers. I'll just translate it into Bill G. And um, as always, I encourage you to buy this book and the other book, Volume 2, and also... Sigong Chu Shang Tin's fantastic DVD, which is now um, complete with a English subtitles, uh, which is just an absolute treasure, full of so much wisdom and information. And especially if you're somewhere down the track in your Wing Chun journey, you'll find if you don't have these, you really must get them, because as you read them day by day, you'll come across gems that'll really change the way you train and give you those ideas that build up into a very powerful fighting form, which is what Wing Chun is. Um, so to start off with, Sigung writes that Bill G is the third form set in the Wing Chun martial art. Traditionally, Bill G has been regarded as prohibited to outsiders. Grandmaster Yip Man also mentioned that it would not be taught to others not of his lineage. This might be due to some old-fashioned thinking that heritage is proprietary, um, meaning it's a sort of a, a guarded secret that should only be given out at the right price, virtually. Um, or it's due to the fact that those who have not built a solid foundation in Wing Chun are not ready to receive darting fingers will build G training. I, Sigong Chu, believe the latter explanation to be more reasonable. That he thought that this should not be given out to people who are not ready for it. So here am I giving it out. Uh, but I'm encouraged by the fact that Sigung believed in, in not holding back and giving things out. Um, the thing I would say to you is if you're new at Wing Chun, certainly listen to what I have to say, listen to what things uh, Sigong Chu Shang Tin says. Watch the demonstrations, but don't bother too much about Bill G until you've really, um, not mastered, but got very good at Sil Nim Dao and understood the principles that, that we teach. And then until you get good at Chum Q. And what I mean by good is you should be able to be tested uh, to quite a difficult level with a lot of force by somebody who knows what they're doing or even just a sensitive friend, you should be able to pretty much effortlessly move against as you're doing the actions in the Sil Nim Dao form and the Chum Q form. You should be able to move your arms up and down and out. You should be able to take force in and dissipate it. You should be able to, when you move against somebody, it shouldn't affect your body. When you perform your chum Q, you should be able to take that invincible body and the, the unified body and arms and pivot effortless, effortlessly. And you should be able to step forwards and backwards without being stopped. And um, so the other person can really feel like the whole of your body weight's moving. And be able to connect your spine, Tai Gong, from the bottom of your spine, the, um, the coccyx bone, just that idea of nipping the anus 
coming, filling the spine up. Uh, what's it called sing, you know, just relax it all the way up. Feel it connected to the top and moving it as one thing with soft effortless legs, floating torso, all those things I've been talking about in the other videos. So be patient. I know it's um, it's exciting to move on to things, but in all arts, it's a real trap to move on before you're ready to move on. Um, if you do, you tend to run out of steam. You tend to hit a block that you can't get past because you've you've got weak foundations. And something I notice when I test other students of Wing Chun, often they're very good at certain things, but I, I test their forms and I find big gaps in their understanding. I say to them, just slow down a bit, relax, work on this. I give them the the keys. Sorry, in this soundproof studio, you can hear the neighbor's kids squealing out there. Um, but you know, I, I, I try to stop people losing heart, but I also try to stop them going too far ahead and um, getting sick of it really. Just, well, I know Bill G, how come, you know, you're saying I'm not really ready for it. So just take your time. And I can't really give you a time for this sort of stuff. Some people get it quicker than others. Some people it took me quite a long time to do Chum Q. Um, I really wanted to get that foundation of Sumim Dao very, very solid. All right, so continuing from Sigun's book, he says, in fact, the conception of Bill G is completely different to that of Sunim Dao and Chum Q. Its name already hints at the idea of offence. The power from the entire body can be mobilised up to the palms and fingers, enabling massive destruction. It is a very practical set of techniques in combat. So this is the essential idea of Bill G, is what the translation says, as Sigong said, accumulating all your weight into your palm and your fingers. Now, I'm not saying that you'll suddenly feel all your whatever. In my case, you know, 105 kilos. I can't feel that sitting there like I'm holding it up. But when my body's unified and soft and relaxed and my mind is in my hand, my palms and my fingertips, that's what somebody else feels. They feel as if all my weight's on them, doing things to them. They can't resist it because that's that's the art is to uh, be able to put all your weight into certain parts of your body and into somebody else and so Bill G is teaching us being the third form it's the most advanced unarmed form get the weight right into the palms and the fingertips now he says under the influence of the tradition that it's pro prohibited to outsiders uh, this is probably stronger in the Hong Kong community. People know more about Wing Chun. And the fantasy of Wing Chun's high offence techniques, and I think stories must circulate about, you know, shooting lighting out your fingers or something. I don't know what people think. Um, sort of those Kung Fu ideas. Uh, learners are prone to mistakenly equate learning Bill G to being gurus in Wing Chun. And I know when I started out um, back in 97 at Sifu Jim's Academy, we, we were all just doing Sun Nim Down. We were told, forget about doing the other forms, just focus on this for a couple of years. And the idea, we knew of Bill G, but it was like almost said in whispered tones, um, wow, imagine one day doing Bill G. And... Um, I'm glad we had that attitude because, as I said before, it's important to be patient. But it's this is typical of Sigung's humour, it seems. You know, he says people think that if they learn Bill G, then they're becoming a guru in Wing Chun. Um, you know, they might become a guru, but it's it's better to stay humble and uh, seek out the real gurus, people that are very very advanced and find out whether you're a guru or not, um, whether you can impress them or not, then maybe you are becoming a guru. 
He said people yearn for accelerated access to its training or start on their own by imitation and just really diminishing into mere copycats. So that's that's the trap. Um, Wing Chun looks quite a simple art. It's, it's not as athletic as many Kung Fu styles. It's not as um, fancy. We don't have as many names for everything. All sorts of fancy sounding names for what we do. So people think, oh, I can do that. I could just copy that. You know, I can do that. But it's chalk and cheese between somebody who is doing it right and somebody's not, you know, because the power's not there and somebody's just copying. They don't understand the basic foundation of Wing Chun, which is not the movements. It's that mind-body state and the ability to stay in that and get the mind and the power and the weight into the extremities. Um, and then he says, undoubtedly, Bill G is, is practically geared to combat However, um, using Bill G is completely based on the achievements in Sil Nim Dao and Chum Q training. For ideal and serious Wing Chun training, Bill G should not be taught without considering a learner's readiness. This is, rather, the correct attitude to heightening the learner's final attainment. Okay, so to the Sifus out there, you know what that's about. You just, as long as you can do it yourself, you need to, to test students and make sure they can do it. Uh, if they can't do it, it's pretty obvious. And um, don't, you know, Sigung's just saying, don't take people too far ahead and either give them a deluded sense of where they're at in their Wing Chun or um, make it frustrating to them. Because I've met people who think they're pretty good and then I test them and it's like, mm. and they keep going back until I just really have to go back to basic foundations sometimes because they, they've been um, not taught really uh, what they need to know. Okay, so... The next, the next little section is called The Structure of Darting Fingers. I'll just read the first parts of it. He says, Bill G, Darting Fingers, rides on the structure consolidated in Silnim Dao. The forward and backward stepping skills and the rotational power acquired in Chum Q. And the resultant power is converged into the arms by idea affecting speedy attacks that already have embedded in them the propelling mo momentum of the body weight. The faster the body weight moves forward or backward and rotates, the more destructive a hand form will result once power has been accumulated onto the attacking point. And then he goes on to talk about how the form should always be done speedily. And um, I, I'll leave it at that, but what he when he says it should be done speedily everyone sort of knows that that Bill G is supposed to be done fast now this is just David Lovegrave's opinion but I I practice Bill G at a moderate speed um, when I I often practice it quite slowly the same way as I do Sunim Dao and uh, Chum Q not because I'm being disobedient, I'm just waiting for the real speed to happen and I've experienced it many times where, especially if I do the form a number of times, then it just starts becoming very fast but effortlessly. It's not forced fast, I'm not trying to be fast and I, th I think that's the key, don't, don't try to be fast. You want to lose yourself in the form the same as you lose yourself in the other ones. Get out of the normal brain. Get into your subconscious and let it guide you. So my feeling is that the subconscious, the Nim Dao, will speed you up when it's right. It's it's really the thing that's training you. It's, it's the great subconscious, unconscious mind. It's your master. You know, if I want to get all Zen about it, it's the Buddha nature. Um, that's what I think Nimlik is. It's it's this 
force that's coming from this living thing, our Nimdao, that's much wiser than we are. It's it's the Tao, so pretty much, if you know anything about the Tao, the Chinese concept of the Tao. Um, but, you know, even if you just think of it as the unconscious mind, it's it's the part of us that we're not aware of it's working, but it does work in the background there. So um, let the uh, speed come naturally. All right, well, I'll leave it at that. Um, we'll see how many sessions I get into with this. Um, I just wish you uh, good luck with your training and look forward to seeing you again.